One of the biggest challenges we face in modern life comes from the mental stress that our brain perceives. The brain evolved at a time where life was very different and it's a very primitive brain and one of the things that it lacks is the ability to let go of stress. And this is reflected in our mind states. Sometimes we feel happy for no reason, sometimes we feel sad for no reason, sometimes we feel hopeless, sometimes we feel disheartened, sometimes we feel very joyful, very loving, sometimes we feel hateful. So the mind brings uh, us into a state which has profound physical effects on our body. If we feel hopeless, we can't motivate ourselves to do things. If we feel joyful, we are ready to take on the world. So the mind state, which is an accumulation of what we perceive, our senses, how our body is feeling, how our environment is around us, all of that has a profound effect on our wellness. So how does one change the mind state? So if I'm in a state which I, where I'm feeling worried, anxious, can I change that state? Can I go into a state where I feel more tranquil, more optimistic, more joyful? Uh, and this can be done. And the techniques of meditation, essentially developed thousands of years ago, allow one to bring one's mind from one state into another state. And there are standard established techniques uh, which have evolved and are useful, very useful for today's life where there are so many stresses and the brain naturally does not know how to deal with those stresses. So it has to be trained. Just like we train our body now, uh, in the past, maybe thousands of years ago, even hundred years ago, we didn't have to go to a gym to work out because just the lifestyle was such that our body could stay fit. But now we have to work out, we have to go to a gym, we have to run, we have to swim, we have to do all kinds of things to keep our body fit. The same thing is with the brain. Uh, our brain needs to be trained how to let go of stress, how to change from one mindset to the other. So if you look at the, how to change the mindset, meditation is the most useful technique. Now meditation also sounds a little like medication you can also medicate yourself and change your mindset. In fact, prescription drugs for depression, for anxiety, for worries are the most prescribed drugs in the modern world. But there's a residue left with chemical change of the brain. Meditation is holistic, doesn't leave any residue and doesn't leave any side effects that medication does. So it's a more useful technique to change the mindset and mind state. So if we look at the mind state, some of them come from the way the brain has evolved. Uh, one can characterize four kinds of mind states. The first one, a wandering mind. The mind just wanders, can't seem to focus. And that's very difficult if you're trying to learn something, if you're a student and your mind just can't stay focused. It just jumps, hops from one state to another, thinks of all kinds of things. That's very common. Uh, and it's a very natural state of the brain where the mind just jumps from state to state. How can one harness the brain and focus it down if it's needed to focus? And sometimes the wandering state is great, uh, it's a fine state, but sometimes you need to focus. The second state where the mind gets fixated on something. So it becomes fixated on a dark state, for example, where you're just feeling hopeless and the mind is fixated. And even though you're in company of people and you're joyful uh, and you're trying to do things, the mind is just fixated on a dark state. And how does one pull one's mind out of that state into a more joyful, tranquil, peaceful state? The third state is where the mind is disconnected from reality. Uh, it can't stay in the moment. And it sees all kinds of fears, boundaries, and it sees limitations around you when there are no limitations. It sees fears in shadows when there are no fears. There are no reason for the fear. And the mind can't seem to take a grip on reality. It can't stay in the moment, enjoy the moment, enjoy the beauty of life, uh, the infinite privilege that one has of living. And finally, there is another mind state where you are stressed and the stress is gone. It has left you. So somebody has shouted at you, you were stressed. And for hours and days, you can't let go of that stress. So the inability to let go of stress that has already passed. 
Now, when you have stress, there's an actual reaction in the brain or in the body for the stress, and that's a healthy reaction. But not being able to let go of that stress and that stress lingering in the mind for days, not letting you sleep properly, not letting you eat properly, exercise properly, so that's not a good thing. So letting go of that uh, stress, when the stress has gone, there's no more, no more reason to feel stressed. So how does one bring oneself out of these mind states into something that you feel better about? So meditation is the technique and the heart of meditation is breath. Using breath, because breath is something we can control. Normally it's an involuntary function, we just breathe without thinking. But you can control your breath. Through that control you can bring your mind into a sharpness that is needed to then change your mind state. So the breath is the first element and the most important element of meditation. But when we look at meditation itself, there is meditation for a monk, a person who has let go of the desires of society, is not participating in society, uh, and the monk has a different mind state need than a person who is involved in the society. So if I'm a parent, I don't want to, or I don't have the resources of a monk to spend hours and hours in a meditation state. I need something different. My mind state has to be different. If I'm a business person running a business and my reason for doing meditation is I don't want to worry about the business unnecessarily. I don't want to feel anxious. I don't want to feel hopeless if something goes wrong. My desires are different. My reasons for meditation are different than a monk. So a monk may have a lot of time and a lot of meditation has been developed to be in the monk state. And that is a useful state even for a person participating in life, but the challenges are different. So meditation can be done in stillness and often the monk's meditation is done in stillness where the person is quiet, seated, you can close your eyes or open your eyes and there's no physical activity. There's no movement of the arms, no movement of the body and you're in a quiet state. Uh, the, the meditation of a person participating in life can include physical movements and that helps sharpen the mind and the time needed for reaching the meditative state is shorter. So both techniques are useful. So the heart of the meditation is breath and then the breath added layers are placed on the breath. So the first thing is breathing very calmly, observing your breath and this is a slow yogic breath where you're breathing very slowly, taking six, seven seconds, inhaling, holding the breath, nourishing and enjoying, savoring the breath, then exhaling for six, seven seconds, holding for a moment. So the four parts to the breath, inhaling through your nose by pressing your diaphragm out, holding for a moment, a couple of seconds, exhaling, keeping your mind focused on your breath and then holding and then repeating. So that is pranayam, the breath. But then on top of the physical activity of the breath, which already sharpens the mind, by just physically controlling your breath, your mind starts getting sharper in dhyan, the state of sharpness, focus. Uh, the next level is performing, feeling like you're performing a dance. So your ribcage opening, your body opening. So you're bringing a level of dance into your pranayam, into your breath. And that's an added element that takes your mind and brings it into a slightly different state. So adding the element of performance, so first just the physical activity, then the performance, then a visualization. And one can visualize something as you're breathing with your eyes closed or open, visualizing green sprouts coming out of dry earth, sunrise, a beautiful visualization that you can create for yourself. And as you inhale, bringing that visualization into your mind. And finally, the last and most important is bringing a mantar, or mantra as they say in English, a mantar which is a universal mantra, connecting yourself to the universe. And that brings in this enormous consciousness, awakens our consciousness, and releases us from despair, anxiety. So bringing something universal, and the universal mantra, or a word that you repeat as you breathe, to yourself or loudly, could be something very simple like love, could be something and often the 
word that has come from centuries is Om, uh, which is a universal resonance. But the mantra could be anything universal. It shouldn't be limited. It should have this universality about it. My personal favorite is Ekonkar, one universe, one creator for the entire universe. So Ekonkar, one source in all creation. So that connects me to everybody. I have this sense of connection when I say Ekonkar. So you can choose your own mantra, but something that connects you to the entire universe and then takes you from a limited state to an infinite state. First, choose a style of pranayam. On our website, there are a number of different styles that are very appropriate. For example, Shant Pranayam, Vah Pranayam, Shardikala Pranayam. Then learn the technique first, which is explained on our website as well. So you can perform without having to think or feel stress in your body. Then choose a vis visualization that goes with your pranayam, an image that you bring in your mind. and Keep your mind on that image. A flower blooming, a beautiful sunrise, a starry night, a full moon. Then choose your mantra. Ekonkar, oneness in all, or Chardikala, unbounded options, Om, universal resonance, or even something like love. And practice the pranayam sequences five times. Practice five breaths and repeat. And after a few days of practicing five minutes, four or five times a day, you can start doing the dance without thinking about the process and your mind will start becoming still during the dance.